Welcome to Business Statistical Analysis, video number 42. And in this video, we got to see how to use Excel formulas to create confidence intervals for proportions. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about how to estimate a population proportion by building a confidence interval. Here's our formula, and it looks very similar to the formulas we used for sigma known and sigma not known when we use the Z and T distribution. Here we're going to use the Z distribution, our normal norm.s inverse functions, for example. We're going to have a sample P, a sample proportion called P bar, plus or minus some margin of error. Now we've seen the Z al uh, sub alpha divided by 2, that's our upper z, times, and there's our standard error, square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar divided by n. So this is the formula we're going to use for building our confidence interval to estimate our population proportion. Let's go over to Excel. All right, so here's our example. A large Seattle coffee company says that Excel skills are important for the 600 plus employees that work in the marketing and accounting department. A sample of potential employees who said they were knowledgeable with Excel is below. So what they did is they went out and they asked potential employees, are you knowledgeable? Now notice the employee is answering either yes or no. So let's think about this. This is a binomial experiment. This is a nominal variable, and there's two possibilities. Now, in order to use the normal distribution, we have to make sure and check that our binomial tests are met, and there are four of them. Experiment consists of sequential and identical trials. So in essence, fixed number of identical trials. Yes, that's true. Two outcomes, identical on each trial. Each trial only results in a success or failure. So they either answer yes, they say they're knowledgeable in Excel, or no, they're not. And you can imagine that this is a question on a some document that they're submitting as a potential employee, right? Because they, they want to know if you're going to work in the marketing account, you better be good with Excel. And you know, this would probably be a first step. Then once you say yes, maybe you get uh, an interview or a test. All right, so yes, there's a success or failure on each trial. Probability of success, yeah, you can either get a yes or a no, so that's the same each time. The trials are independent, so each potential employee is not affecting the next, we'll say yes. So all the tests are met. Now, one, two, three, four, there is actually one further test. We're going to have to check whether n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. If both of those are true, then we're, we can use the normal. All right. Here's our data set here. I'm going to control shift down. So there's, wow, calculate our sample size. So it equals count. Now count counts numbers, and count a uh, counts non-empty cells. And since we have words here, we want to count how many uh, cells have uh, words in them. So we use count a. Uh. All right, now we have to count yes and count no. Our success will be yes. We use the count if. So don't count all of them like count a uh did, but count only some of them. So we give it the range. Control, Shift, Down Arrow, F4 to lock it. Notice the range, there it is, comma, and then the criteria. Now I set no here and yes right there. I can't quite click on it, so I'm going to use my arrow key to go one cell to the left. That'll count what? The yeses. Control, Enter, there we have it. All right, now the probability, we have our total number in the sample, our number of successes. So we'll do equals the number of people that responded yes divided by the sample size. Now I'm going to lock this with the F4 key so I can copy this down. The blue box is on the yes. When I copy it down, the blue box will move down to no. So 32% of these people have the potential of getting an interview or whatever it is this company is going to do with this. That's the sample proportion. It's our po point estimate. It's the best estimate we have of our population parameter. We'll call this p bar. And this is a proportion of potential employee employees who say they know Excel well. Now let's test uh, to see if we can use the normal distribution. 
equals sample size times RP. And um, I'm going to lock this, F4, because the green box is P. This one down here is 1 minus P. So in both cases, we're greater than 5. We can use the standard normal curve. All right, let's calculate. We'll do a confidence interval of 95. We'll say equals 1 minus confidence interval or confidence level to give us our alpha. Alpha divided by 2, just as we've done so many times so far in this chapter. That's the risk on the upper end. We'll calculate our z on the upper end. And we can use equals norm. There's norm dot inverse, but norm s inverse gives us the z. Now the probability, we need all the probability minus the little bit on the upper end. So we'll say 1 minus. So there's our upper 1.96 approximately. Our standard error, we have our formula right here. We saw it over in the PDFs. p times 1 minus p divided by n. So I'm going to get uh, the p all in the square root. The p times 1 minus divided by our n. And we get 0 0.014. All right, so that's our standard error. Now our margin of error. We're going to say z times the standard error. And there we have our margin of error. That's the amount to add on either side of our p bar right here. So the lower limit, I'm going to subtract, equals the upper limit, so we have our p bar plus our margin of error. OK, so now we have an estimate, our conclusion. A 95% confidence interval for the proportion of potential employees who say they know Excel well is 0.294 to 0.349. Somewhere in that interval, we're estimating at 95% confidence that our population proportion exists. Uh, let's go look at a second example. Let's go over to P bar 2. So here's our second example. Furniture Land South surveyed their customers n equals 600. That was a sample size to see if they liked the new line of durable foam furniture decorated in bright colors. 414 said they were excited about the new line. All the binomial tests are met. All right, so our variables, we have x number of successes. That is, we like it. Sample size 600, so we can figure out the p bar 414 divided by our n, 0.69. So our sample proportion is the best estimate for the population proportion, right? And so the, the owner of Furniture Land is saying, well, hey, that's pretty good. Maybe this is a potential uh, product we can launch. All right, now let's come down here. We have our p bar up here. Level of confidence, let's do 0.99. We want to be really sure. Have 1% risk, that alpha. So 1 minus that. Alpha divided by 2, a half a percent, or 0 0.005. So that divided by 2. Our z, we're going to do not norm as it there. It's norm dot s dot inverse. So norm dot inverse. So inverse wants a probability. Now notice this is a teeny little bit of risk on the upper end. So I'm going to say 1 minus that. So there we go. So 2.57. That's our z. So our standard error, we'll go ahead and do that same square root. We have p and times. And here we're going to have to solve for 1 minus, because in the last example we had it. But here we don't. So 1 minus that divided by our count, which is 600. So 0 0.018, our margin of error. We'll take our standard error times our z it equals standard error times z. Now we have our margin of error. We just simply take our p bar, subtract the margin of error, take our p bar, and add the margin of error. OK, so we have two values a lower and an upper that span an interval where we're 99% sure that our population proportion exists. So the owner could be 99% sure that the population proportion percentage of customers excited about the new product is between 
about 64 and about 74 uh, percent. Uh, so pretty good proportion of customers that are excited and so then the owner says well hey uh, maybe we should launch this product. Alright so two examples in this video of estimating the population proportion based on sample data. So that's it for chapter 8. Next chapter, chapter 9, we're going to talk about hypothesis testing. All right, see you next video.